Hi, Dr. Quinn. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, I have a son who is 14 years old. Uh, last September, he was diagnosed with lupus. Um, the doctors sent him straight to the rheumatology specialist, and um, I point blank asked him, you know, can his diet, can changing his diet, can taking, you know, supplements and things like that help with him? And he said, no, absolutely not. He said, this is a chronic condition. He's going to have it his whole life, and all you can do is manage the symptoms and take all these medications. So he sent us home with, of course, some Loxcam, Plaquenil, prednisone. Um, my son took it probably for about three weeks, and I said, okay, absolutely not. This is not even my child anymore, <laughs> you know. And I got with my brother, who is into the longevity movement, and he sent me your, your webinar on lupus. So we ordered all of that stuff. I decided, you know, I'll only take him back every three months to get his blood work done. Um, so I started him on longevity in November saw him improve like drastically, took him in in January to get blood work done, you know, told them that I wasn't medicating him with their medications, that I was treating him in a different way. They weren't really happy, but they got his blood work back and it had all gone from being not great to being like so normal. They were so amazed. They called me up and said, you know, his blood work is great. He still shows signs that he does still have, you know, lupus in his system, but whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You know, it's working. And I just started laughing and I didn't tell him, you know, at the time what it was. He came back in in April. He lost a little bit of weight. Um, he's only about 4'11", so he was probably about 83 pounds. And that I looked up his BMI for him. That was completely normal. Yeah, that's right in the right. They were... Yeah, they were concerned. They're like, oh, my goodness, he's lost all this weight. And I said, but he's perfectly fine. He's healthy, you know. Right. And they were like, you know, you really need to have him on the med. You really, really, he needs to be on the Plaquenil. He really needs to be on this stuff. And I said, but he's not having any problems. He's fine. Um, so come to, I took him to the doctor this last week, and they put him in the hospital. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, all right. Yes. So they put him in the hospital. They put him in the hospital. Why? He's what were, What was their excuse for putting him in the hospital? They were ex extremely worried about his nutrition, yet he's still within his BMI. So they thought that he was underweight even though he wasn't underweight. Yes. And that was the excuse that they used to get him into the hospital. By the way, was yes. this, this was what? When did this happen? This just this last Tuesday, I took oh. him to his pediatrician. Well, that's why, because the pediatrician has a responsibility to fill so many beds in the hospital every month. So th the absolute worst time for anybody to bring any to, to go to the doctors is at the end of the month, you know, in the last week of the month, because they're going to hospitalize you for a hangnail, for goodness sake, and they'll <laughs> they'll look for any reason whatsoever to stick somebody in the hospital. So the kid, even though according to the height, weight metabolic index that the child is fine the doctor thinks oh he's low weight and so we have to hospitalize him right away because he's got lupus huff and puff is that what happened that's what happened he he wasn't even flared up he wasn't showing any signs they stuck him in the hospital last Tuesday they pulled a bunch they took like 30 miles of blood work off my kid um, the blood work came back actually and it showed that his lupus was it normal. His blood work was normal. So there had been no change in the blood work whatsoever. There was no, no real objective reason to hospitalize a kid. And I'm going to bet you 25 cents that when they stuck him in the hospital, they also started loading him up with drugs. Did they do that? They loaded him up with prednisone, Plaquenil, against my wishes. Against your never, wishes? How old is this child? Never, he's 14. Unbelievable. They would never medicate him when I was there. When I had to leave, they'd always come in and put something through his, you know, he had an IV in his hand. And they were like, well, you know, he needs to stay here. He needs to gain a few pounds. 
I had the doctors show me his blood work and compare all the blood work. And they showed me his levels and they were perfectly fine. And I looked at her and I said, those are within your limits. Why are you drugging him? She says, well, when children come in with lupus, we, you know, we're treating the nutrition, but we have to treat his lupus also. Stick with me, Nissa. Stick with me. Oh, my God. This is like, uh, I've been telling you, ladies and gentlemen, what do you need to do? You need to fire your MD now. And here we've got direct first-hand experience. Stick around, folks. There's more to come. All right, Nissa, are you back with me? Yeah, I'm here. All right, good. So your son is 14 years old. Yes. And how long has he been dealing with, uh, you know, uh, uh, physical conditions that they then diagnosed as autoimmune thyroiditis? Um, you know, it was probably sometime around uh, April of 2012. He would get up in the morning and he'd have trouble walking and him being his age, I just said, you know, son, it's probably just growing pains, you know. Right. Um, he started a rash on his body that, you know, nobody could explain to us. And then he went over the summer to New Mexico and he got with his dad and he got a third degree sunburn on his face. And it seemed like from there it just took off. So, yeah. Okay, good. So when you started him on the longevity supplements, what were in the... November. Okay, and what... What? Give me some specifics about what you saw improve. Um, everything improved. He could move better. <laughs> there was less joint pain. Um, he wasn't running the fevers. He wasn't sweating at night. Uh, the fatigue wasn't bad. Um, before that, I mean, honestly, on their medications, he would stay in bed for days and days. He couldn't get up. Really? Um, yeah, he just... He, he, and they told me, it was really, well, they told me when they first diagnosed him, they said, oh, no, he's a boy. This is so rare in boys, and, you know, um, it's so much worse in boys, and usually by the time they're in their 20s, they're on dialysis, and, and you know, they're getting kidney transplants, you know. I mean, they just really talked this horribly, you know, to me, and as soon as I started him on the longevity, everything seemed to come back up, and he, you know, like I said, I've seen the blood work. He, he, he went to completely normal blood work and then when I told him what I was doing because I was honest with him I said no why he's not taking your medication you know I said your side effects the side effects of the prednisone alone were just horrible for him right and and I said you know no there's another way to do this I said I know there's another way to do this it works and I knew I could prove it to him in the blood work and that's why I said I only take him in every three months just to get blood work and they can't explain to me why. I point blank called them all on it and said, from November to January, what happened that his blood work got completely normal? Well, we don't know. He could have just gone into remission. And I said, no, I will tell you what happened. I said, I took him off of all your meds, and I started him on all of this other stuff. I said, and look what happened. And, of course, you know, they don't say anything after that. They're just like, well, you know, they move on to something <laughs> well, see, this is so. The, so, sorry. Right, so, bring me up to speed with the latest. Now, they put him in the hospital for no reason whatsoever, just to you know make the doctors' uh, hospital admitting credits come up to speed ostensibly. So now your child's in the hospital, and they start giving him the drugs again, but only when you're not there because they know you're going to pitch a fit if they do it while you're there. So, how long was the child in the hospital before you got him the heck out of there? He was he was admitted last Tuesday, and they finally let him go on Friday morning because they couldn't keep him any longer. And I was like, you're going to let him out. Yeah. You know, I said, I'm done with this. He's fine. They showed me his blood work. I said, I'm looking at this with you. I said, you guys made him worse. I said, look at his blood work when he came in. You're telling me this was all within normal limits. I said, now look at his white cells. Look at his CBCs. I said, it's all elevated right. so high that it's not normal. Right. I said, you guys made him worse. Why? Well, that's just what the medication does. So, and he, you know, they, go ahead. I, I mean, I, I'm flabbergasted here that they actually said that to you. So it's like there's this giant disconnect between reality because they have this idea in their head that, oh, you know, this particular illness is an incurable illness and everybody that has this illness has to go on the drugs. And so they have evidence right in front of their face with brand new blood work that shows everything's normal. And then they admit the child because they admit the child because they're idiots. And then on their program, his blood work gets worse. And then exactly. you show that to them and bring it to their attention. And they say, oh, well, that's just how it is, dearie. We know what's best. You don't know what's best. 
And that, to me, is, I mean, it is just the tip of the iceberg of what's going on here all around the country. And, you know, we wonder why we have a health care crisis. We wonder why the economy is melting down. We wonder why medical costs are skyrocketing. Because MD-directed medical therapeutics for chronic disease don't work. It's a ship of fools driven by a fool who's blind. And I got to tell you, man, Nisa, my heart goes right out to you. And this is, you know, this is such a poignant story because it is so, I mean, this is just last week that all of this stuff happened, right? Just last week. So they, they didn't, did they make any noise about child protection services or anything like that? I'm waiting for that because of some of the stuff they wrote down in the notes. Yeah. Um, they keep telling me that he's going to end up with organ damage. And I said in eight months. Every test you've run on this child has said that there's no organ damage. I said, right. you tell me how that's possible in eight months of not taking your medication and this child is, is not to have any organ damage. I said, I'm doing something right. Well, you I know, said, because you're right. within you're, a few you, months, within a few months, his organs should have been trashed, according to you guys, I said. Correct. And so they move the goalposts all the time because they're full of crap. They are 100% yeah. full of crap. Right. And you know, oh. and then the thing to the thing that's flabbergasting to me is, you know, it, it it takes a little bit of smarts to be able to make it through medical school. They don't just let anybody into medical school. Number one, and number two, you know, it's not a, a difficult thing to do, but you know, you have to apply yourself and think, and you know, you have to get through the coursework. And so, people who are licensed physicians, they're not stupid right they're educated and they're smart and yet even though they're educated and they're smart they have evidence directly in front of their face that goes contrary to what they've been taught and they overlook it it's like their eyes glass over they don't see it at all and this i no, think they won't even listen no they won't even listen and, and this is you know what this is like nissa this is like uh trying to tell somebody who's in the ku klux klan that african americans are really people and they're not animals and because they believe that blacks all around the world are animals. They're no different than animals. And that was the whole reason that slavery was uh, put in place for so many years, because there was a paradigm that, oh, those blacks, they're not really people. They don't have souls, and they're animals, and so you can treat them like animals. And to tell somebody who has that mindset something different, even though you have evidence to the contrary, they're not going to see it. They're going to overlook it, which is why... I strongly advise everybody in this listening audience, everybody in the freaking world, to fire your medical doctor. Because not only do they have nothing for you in the treatment of chronic disease, that's of any positive benefit, they have lots of nonsense for you if you're foolish enough to set one little pinky toe inside their office or inside their hospitals. The only time to see these people is if you're bleeding to death, if you have a broken bone or some type of trauma. All right, but I'm assuming that your story's not over. So what I no, would... No, it for All right, so bring me up to speed with what's happening today. Okay, so well, they sent all their dietitians in, and they were trying to give him boost and <laughs> trying to give him insure, and I kept telling him he can't have that. You're not giving that to him. This child gained eight pounds in three days just off their crap food from the hospital. Right. Okay. Now, that alone is not healthy, okay? He had so many intestinal problems after that because he's not used to that food. Right. So, I Let know me guess, they were giving him, were they giving him French fries in the hospital? French fries, corn dogs, pizza. Um, Unbelievable. Any, fried fish. Um, fried anything fish. Anything he wanted. Anything he wanted, he could order 24-7 from their cafeteria. Unbelievable. It was, it was horrible. So, I, I mean, their dietitian came in, and I, I know more about nutrition than that lady did. Because I, was just like, I was like, you really think this stuff is healthy? I was like, have you read the ingredients in this stuff, you know? So, then they sent their child psychiatrist in. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No, I am so not kidding. And they would come and see my son Ryan when I wasn't there. And he told me, he said, Mom, they keep trying to get me to say I'm depressed. He said, but I'm not depressed. They keep trying to put it in many different ways and they're using big words and they, you know, I keep telling them I'm not depressed, but they keep trying to tell me I am depressed. So when I talked to the child psychiatrist, he got really upset with me and he said, well, what is your problem with these medications that are going to help your son? And I said, one, these medications are poison. They're not going to help my son. I said, two, I'm helping my son better than any of that stuff is helping. I said, and three, I said, the damage you're going to do to my son in six months 
when you come up and tell me that his liver is damaged from what you're giving him, I said, then you're going to have to stop the medication, try to give him some other medication to fix his liver. And the guy looked at me and he just yelled at me and he says, you can't worry about what's going to happen in six months because you may not even be here tomorrow. On. Believable, and this that came from a psychiatrist. Yeah, well, you know, psychiatrists believe that consciousness is a function of biochemistry. Psychiatrists believe that your consciousness is a function of your biochemistry, and that your soul does not exist, and that there's no inherent spiritual essence in the human being. That everything's this giant, giant biochemical soup that they have to like manipulate with man-made synthetic drugs when people are, you know, not in their right minds, according to them. Honest to God, this is just unbelievable to me. Now, thank God. Do you live in Utah? I live in Salt Lake City, yes. Yeah, okay. So Utah is a state in which naturopathic medicine is licensed. Is that correct? Um, I can't find any under my insurance, but I do believe there's some here. And that's part of my question I wanted to ask you today is that my worry is they are going to get with social services because they wrote down in the discharge notes that the mom is non-compliant. They're saying here that he was admitted for weight loss and depression, but they're saying that I refuse to medicate him and that he has become depressed. Which is a lie. That, which is a lie, but they, they have that in his file now. Yeah, you which know, is... They have that in his medical record now. Yeah, it's unbelievable to me that this should happen. You know what I would do? I would be proactive on this, and I would I would get with a lawyer, and I would uh, be proactive about this. I would file a complaint against the hospital uh, for something. I mean, I, you got there. There's got to be a, a complaint in here somewhere for misrepresenting your child's welfare on the chart. Because the child's not depressed, and they asked him a million times whether he's depressed or not, and then regardless of what he says, they write down that he's depressed because, you know, I mean, this is like communist Russia, for goodness sake. So what you need to do is get with a licensed health care provider in your state who is of holistic orientation, get under their care immediately, so that if Child Protection Services does come after you, you have something in your quiver. And if you, we're coming up against a hard break here in about a minute. If you stick around on the phone, I'll talk to you off the air, and I'll see if I can, uh, you know, triage this for you uh, with some type of uh, medical, hooking you up with some type of medical professional, holistically oriented, in the great state of Utah. Nissa, I got to give you a great big uh, Dr. Glidden round of applause here. Well, look, this is, uh, my hat goes off to you for number one, for taking a stand for your son's health. Number two, for standing up for what's right. Number three, for having common sense. Number four, for not being manipulated by the men and the women in the white coat. Number five, for having the wherewithal to work outside of conventional medicine to bring about a change. This is the beginning for you. This is the beginning for you. I see a book in here. I see a Hollywood movie. I see something in here, for goodness sake. This is the best story and the worst story I've heard in the last three years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Peter Glidden. This is Fire, your MD now. Back with more after these messages. Right. So I want to do this little rundown about uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, which is was the presumptive diagnosis here. Lupus is thought to be an autoimmune disease, and we in the holistic health community do not believe that the body is creating antibodies against itself. There's an antibody that's present when somebody has the clinical signs and symptoms of lupus, but the MDs have jumped the gun, and they believe that the disease is caused by the antibody. They believe that the disease is caused by the antibody, that somehow the body has decided to chew itself up and it's created this antibody, and now the antibody is destroying the body's own tissue, and, you know, we're off to the races. This is kind of like thinking that firemen cause fires because, well, son of a gun, uh, the bigger the fire, the more firemen, right? So, therefore, firemen must cause fires. Or it's thinking like the sun goes around the earth because you look outside, and what do you see? You see the sun moving. Well, you know, the sun's moving around the earth. Well, no, 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 and no. And because MDs are intellectually cowardly, Nobody ever questions what they were taught in medical school. So one medical doctor years ago in some research facility somewhere determines 
that the antibody found present in systemic lupus erythematosus is the causative factor of the illness. He doesn't su supply any evidence to support that supposition, and then all the MDs fall in line and lockstep behind him, and nobody questions it because they're all idiots. Well, they're not idiots, but they're cowards. They're intellectual cowards, and uh, you know they make stuff up as they go along. They move the goalposts, as you just heard. I mean, this is an unbelievably poignant story, especially coming today on the heels of Clint Miller's death. So, you know, what happens from our point of view, from the correct point of view? Now, remember, this hasn't been documented because and proven uh, st beyond a statistical uncertainty because the naturopathic profession doesn't get tens of millions of dollars to do medical research. Only the drug companies get that. But, you know, we have common sense and we have street smarts and we have clinical experience and we know what we know and we apply what we know and we see what the heck happens and here's what we think happens. There's a chronic, low-grade inflammatory process happening 24-7 in some people's bodies. Well, in most people's bodies, but in some people it really takes gets legs. So uh, Nissa's son was eating all the wrong food all the time, didn't know it, was born with a nutritional deficiency because Nissa's obstetrician had no idea about medical nutrition, had no idea about the 90 essential nutrients, so she trusted the wrong people. So her child is born in a body that is weak. Why? Because it's nutritionally deficient. And it's growing up for 14 years with nutritional deficiencies, which are not being met. And so one thing follows the next, and inflammation happens somewhere in the body, not because there's a bad gene, not because there's an antibody, but because the body has simply run out of the nutrients it needs to maintain its integrity, and the child is unwittingly eating foods that are inflammatory day after day after week after week after month after month after year. Something's going to break. So something breaks. The body breaks at its weakest link. In this case, it was the thyroid, I guess. So now the thyroid's in trouble because there's chronic 14 years of low-grade inflammation. Ever seen a dead animal on the side of the road? You turn it over, what do you see? Worms. They're eating it up. This is nature taking care of rotten flesh. Well, the same thing happens in the body. When there's a chronic inflammatory process in the body for decades, the body has dead and diseased tissue that it tries to get rid of. And how the heck does it do that? By creating an antibody. The antibody is ostensibly chewing up the dead tissue that was caused by the chronic inflammation, but the MDs come late to the party. They only see the inflammation that's present now and the presence of the antibody. And because they're stupid, pig-headed, you know, uh, blinders on, I only believe what Pfizer Pharmaceutical tells them, they make the wrong determination. It's the chronic inflammation that causes the presence of the antibody. The antibody is present because of the disease. The antibody is not causing it. So what do we do in a situation like this? Number one, eliminate the 10 bad foods. Number two, one anti-aging healthy start pack for 100 pounds of body weight per month. Number three, one bottle of selenium for 50 pounds of body weight per month. One bottle of, X, one bottle of minerals a month. One bottle of extra calcium a month, liquid osteo FX plus, and a diet that's high in antioxidants. Triple treat chocolate sounds like a good idea for me. And to manage joint pain, CM cream topically, that's what we do to support the body's ability to optimize its function. If you're not angry, you're not paying attention, I'll be taking more calls when we come back in the second hour.